Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube and in this short video, I'm going to quickly explain how you can load a pre-trained Keras model and continue the training process. Well, you may think that's an easy thing. You do that all the time. You save the file as uh, uh, .hy, for example, and then you load it and you continue. That works great if you're using standard loss functions and standard uh, metrics that are defined uh, or that are available in Keras by default. Now, what if you are using your own custom loss function and your own custom metric? It will throw an error. As you can see in the screen down here, in this example, it says, hey, unknown loss function when I try to load my pre-trained uh, model for further training. If you don't want to do further training, you can just say, hey, compile equals to false, which means it doesn't compile it. What does that mean? When we define a model, you, we are going to compile it. And when we compile it, we are going to give uh, an optimizer, right? And if you're using a custom optimizer, you have to tell the model while you're loading that you are using a custom optimizer. Same thing goes with loss function and metrics. So these are the things we define when we compile a model. So if any of those are unavailable to Keras or it doesn't know, you have to mention that. And that's the core essence of this uh, short video. Okay, so let me go ahead and jump into the code just to show you the few lines of how to handle this. Okay, so let's jump into our uh, spider IDE. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the code in case you're wondering, this is uh, again a, uh, I believe like a brain MRI. This is the Bratz 2000 uh, uh, data set that I'm experimenting with. So yeah, expect a video hopefully in a few weeks uh, on this topic. It's obviously working great as you can see uh, how the testing and the prediction is, but let's focus on the topic uh, for today, okay? So uh, here is the deal. I saved my, uh, I saved my model as Brad's uh, 3D 100 epochs and whatever you know this file name is. Now, I would like to load this and how do you typically load it, right? I mean, from keras.models, import load model. Let's ignore these two. Okay, I was experimenting with something. Okay, so from keras.models, import load model. And then what do you do? Load the model and this is the model path. So when you try to do that, it's going to throw an error saying unknown loss function dice loss plus one focal loss. What, what, what does that mean? Let me just show you the model uh, that, I'm, uh, that I'm using or how I'm compiling my model. So here is the loss that I defined. I defined dice loss and also I defined focal loss, right? I mean, they both are uh, usually very useful for semantic segmentation. And uh, I, I don't want to use only dice or only focal. So I actually created a new loss called total loss, which is basically a dice loss plus focal loss, where I am weighting focal loss by one. Again, I, I was experimenting with, okay, how about if I increase the importance of focal loss by two times and three times, but it doesn't matter. This is my custom loss function right now. And apparently it gave a, its own name right there. It says dice loss plus one focal loss, right? I mean, it's basically saying dice loss plus one, oh, sorry, dice loss plus one focal loss, and then it gave that name. It says, hey, this is an unknown loss function. So I don't know what to do. So let's let's go back and tell it that this is an unknown loss function. How do you do that? So when you load this model, let me scroll to the right, go ahead and add custom objects. So what custom objects do we have here? You can have custom optimizer, you can have custom loss functions and so on. So in this case, since it doesn't know what this dice loss plus one focal loss is, I just copied that and pasted this right here and created a dictionary, okay? Saying that you can have multiple objects, custom objects. So this is uh, the uh, one custom objects because it threw that error, right? I mean, it, it threw that error. So I'm like, okay, let me take care of it. So I put dice loss plus one focal loss. What is that? That's nothing but my total loss, right? I mean, that's exactly what we have defined up here. This is basically my total loss. So now it knows how to handle uh, loss, what loss function is. And by the way, it did not give any error uh, about optimizer, why? Let's see which one we are using. We are using an optimizer, oh, where, where did I define? I need to get this code in order. Okay, right there. So my optimizer is basically Adam optimizer, which Keras already knows about it. So it's, it's, it's like, fine, I know what optimizer is, but what is your loss function, right? So that's exactly what it's saying. So we gave the loss function right here. So let's uh, do that so you can see. We gave that, okay, the loss function is dice loss plus this is basically the total loss. So now let's go ahead and run these two lines 
And when we do that, it's probably going to yeah throw an error saying unknown metric function. So now it knows what the loss is. Now it's like, hey, I don't know what unknown metric function IOU score is. Why is it throwing that? Again, let's go back and look at our accuracy, uh, sorry, our metrics right here. I'm tracking two metrics while uh, I'm, I'm uh, training the, the model. One is accuracy, which it should know. That's why it didn't throw any error. The other one is called IOU score with a threshold of 0 0.5, okay? So it, it has no clue what's going on here. So it's again asking me just what is that, yeah? And it's throwing that because it's trying to run this line, model.compile, and it only knew of what optimizer we used, and these two, it's throwing errors. So once I define the metric, it should fix the issue. So let's go down. And that's exactly what I've done in this next line. Uh, too much. Uh, <laughs> Let's do this. Sorry about this. I should be a bit organized. I was. Uh, I saw this error and I thought you guys should know about it right away rather than wait for this video to be out. I mean, the entire Bratz video to be out. Okay, there you go. Uh, so I created this dictionary, right? I mean, we created the dictionary. Previously, we had total loss. I mean, the loss function. Now, because it's throwing an error about IOU score, I copied this IOU score. And then what is it? It's basically my metrics exactly the same line I used before, yeah? You can assign this to a variable if you want uh, this to be, uh, you know, a simple line. But anyway, so now that we provided what our custom objects are, I expect this to load perfectly okay. Now let's check if it is loading the model fine. I mean, if it's ready for, uh, for training, I just put one more epoch here. I've already trained this for 100 epochs as you can tell from the name, and I was getting very good uh, IOU. And let's see how it starts or where it starts. It should not start from very low accuracy and very low IOU values, right? So it starts with an accuracy of 97, 98%, and my IOU score of uh, about 80% right there. It's jumping from 80 to 83, but there you go. So now I can train for 100 more epochs rather than start from scratch. So uh, now one final thing I should mention is if you really want to load the model only for prediction, not for further training, then you just need to, when you load the model, you just need to say compile equals to false. Then you can just load it and uh, let's go ahead and do that. Then you can load that and it's not going to compile it. And But all the weights are available for you to predict. So let's go ahead and do some, uh, uh, well, let's just, <laughs> Let's just do this part so you can at least see, probably it spits out the same uh, right there, yeah? And let's see another slice just to make sure, 25, yeah? Just to make sure it's working fine. Another slice, well, what do we know? There is nothing there to see. Uh, is there anything at 55? Let us see one last time. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's doing a great job right there. Uh, in segmenting uh, this data set. So the summary is when you are loading a pre-trained model for to continue the training process, again, this can be very useful for Google Colab because on Colab, you only have 12 hours and then it disconnects. When you reconnect, you may want to save the model before it disconnected and then do exactly what I just showed you here, right? Go ahead and load, go ahead and load the model and provide the custom objects, okay? So again, I hope you found this uh, short tutorial or tip or trick to be uh, useful and relevant. And please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about this channel because they can benefit from this too, right? So thank you guys and let's meet again in the next video. Thanks.